Right, I'm in London, and I've been joined by uh, Hamish from the band My Dying Bride. How's it going, sir? Hi there, Jordan. Very pleased to be here. Very uh, pleased to be doing some UK shows, uh, which is a bit of a, a rarity for us. We don't particularly tour that much full stop, and certainly haven't done in the UK for a while, despite it being our, our fair home. So, uh, yeah, first night... Uh, of just a you know a quick stretch of dates and so yeah pressure's quite quite on we've got a very long set we've got uh, lots of stuff we've not done before ever even in in the set so uh, so yeah pressure's on but uh, oh yeah I'm, I'm perversely looking forward to it as well. As you said, you don't you don't gig a lot in the UK. Uh, is there a particular reason for that? Are you thinking about you know making the shows more special if you do them uh, sort of more rare? Really, it's uh, it's nice having uh, you know the shows being more of an event each time because they are a, b- a bit of a rarity, and uh, you know, I would like to think that uh, we're not overexposed and people don't yeah get, get tired of us that way. Uh, I would like to, to to certainly play the UK more. It's very much a bit of a demand thing, really. Uh, we get. Uh, we get offers for shows, and um, and it, it's really quite dull in some ways. If it uh, if we cover our costs and uh, and it seems good, we'll we'll, we'll do it. We've um, you know, d- done a small number of uh, UK shows over the years, but there've been quite a lot of festival appearances on there, really, rather than headlining shows. And um, I, I enjoy both for for different reasons. But uh, we've been well overdue some headlining shows with a proper full length set. I don't think we've done a longer set than what we've got planned tonight. In fact, I know we definitely haven't. So it could be quite tiring. It's value for money, which is very important in this day and age. <laughs> right, now the band's been going for 20 years. You've been doing it for, well, over 10 now as well. Um, so did, did you have any sort of inkling when you joined that you'd be in it for, for this long? Did, did you have plans for this? Uh, yeah, very much so. Because um, when uh, I first joined... Uh, before we'd even played a live show together, myself and Andrew had actually written the first version of Cruel Taste of Winter. So kind of from the outset, I was very keen on, on, on my behalf uh, to, you know, to, to really forge a, a writing partnership there. And so I, I was really looking uh, for the long term. And, um, and the, you know, the band was going through a period of rebirth at that point. Uh, you know, it was regrouping after the 34 album and uh, just about to release like at the end of the world and uh, we went off did european tour made sure that uh, you know we, we got on well enough but uh, we had uh, you know already discovered that we could could work together creatively as well and so yeah i was very much planning on being a permanent fixture over that time, uh, obviously, a lot can change, uh, especially in the 20 years and in the 10, even the 10 years that you've been, well, over 10 years that you've been involved. How do you think that the band has changed, both in sort of interpersonal relationships, but also musically? How have you, how have you evolved? Uh, we've uh, certainly tried to um, broaden our palette in some ways, but whilst retaining a real sense of identity that true to what My Dying Bride was, the uh, 34 album mentioned earlier was, was, was quite a, a radical departure in some ways that uh, was a bit of a leap of faith for some so and Andy in particular was, was very keen to really go back to the roots of what My Dying Bride was and we've always had a very strong vision of of what My Dying Bride should, should be doing. Uh, I've also wanted to bring in quite a bit of more layered instrumentation and a slightly different approach to uh, some of the guitar work. We play in a very different fashion myself and uh, Andrew and um, for a, a, a long time at the start of uh, you know me being in the band we didn't have the violin which is really quite a key ingredient to the band so uh, with that out of the picture the, the focus really came onto the guitar work quite a bit more so there's quite a lot more layering a lot more you know melodies some slightly different you know kind of soundscaping in there uh, now of course brought the violin back we've got uh, you know a very dense musical soundscape with lots of guitars and lots of uh, and now the violin back in too so uh, so uh, constant refining really more than uh, you know a, a you know, complete reinvention so uh, we're a bit long in the, the tooth now. We, we, we know what we want to do. But yeah, you said uh, long in the tooth. You've been doing this quite a while. Do you find that one thing I find really remarkable is uh, how do you keep coming up with tracks that are, that are fresh and new and still have that My Dying Bride appeal? I mean, do you find that often you write tracks and you think, actually, that's slightly too much like what we've already done? Uh, how, how do you manage to keep that freshness? Uh, basically, by not 
kind of setting out uh, too much of, of a template of um, we want to write more of a death metal song for this one here. We've tried that, we, where Aaron's written some lyrics first and says, he, you know, he's got a very definite idea. This wants to be a fast blasting song. And we've tried writing to order like that. And it's not necessarily the most natural way to, to go about it. And so more often than not, the music's kind of coming first. Or we've read some of his lyrics and taken our own inspiration from it. Uh, but, but a lot of it's very, very organic, really. Uh, we're writing at the moment right now, and it's um, it's a very distilled kind of almost really funeral take on on doom right now, which is harking back in some ways to perhaps some of the more more early material. It wasn't really a conscious decision. It was just that's what we're getting most excited by by playing at the moment. Um, we're never writing anything for any kind of broad commercial appeal, obviously. But uh, uh, what's more important to us is, um, is, is being true to ourselves on each um, on each album, which sounds like you know, quite a hackneyed phrase, but uh, we call the album line the Deathless Kings that title because for us that was reflecting each album. You know, the, as much as the you know the band we have a limited lifespan and we won't be doing this for you know forever, but those albums remain that was us that year that was us in that lineup at that time and that was exactly what we meant at, at that point so uh, maintaining that's more important do you have a, a favorite album out of the, the entire lot i know it's a difficult question most people say well a new one but do you have a personal favorite that you listen to yourself um um Possibly Line of Deathless Kings, actually. Uh, I'm very fond of that album. I think it sounds great and um, really, you know, love the song structures in it. And I also loved making it. Happy memories of that album. We'd had a, a difficult uh, period of time before with uh, our poor drummer, Sean Taylor Steele's being injured and you know it was quite you know depressing for him and for us as well and uh, we, we tried carrying on with him as long as possible but then he just said he had to take a back seat and then we got uh, a young guy called John Bennett and who really added a lot of enthusiasm and, and you know, it was just a very very positive vibe and um, even though he didn't uh, stick around uh, too long <laughs> and uh, in fact uh, as soon as the album was was uh, was out. He couldn't stick around, and also then Adrian, the you know, very long-term bass player, left. And we got Dan and Lainer in, and it was just, I don't know. It, 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 even though there was all these kind of trials and tribulations, there was there was a very positive vibe around everything that we did, and it was a you know real good time for us. And um, and that was then reflected in some of the the office shows that we were getting. We played with Metallica, for God's sake! Like wow, you know, just. Couldn't, couldn't believe that, and uh, and uh, you know playing the Donington Fest, it just things were just go, going really well at that point. It, it was a very positive time, so I have a lot of um, fond memories of, uh, of that album and the songs associated to it. So I, yeah, I'm very fond of that for personal reasons. Right now, you're coming up to releasing an album very very shortly um, called Evinter yes um, can you just tell us a bit about that because it's quite a, is a different it's not like completely new songs if you could just tell us about about that album it's uh, an, an idea that um, Andrew was very very fond of um, his dad's on the back burner for a long long time of wanting uh, to hear the the music that um, we've created reinterpreted for purely you know strings or more ambient orchestrations and um, so uh, the the songs have got uh, you know, reference points of you know moods and themes from existing songs, but they're not like um, a, a reinterpretation of a single song. It takes you know related and interweaving passages from a few different um, you know songs out there and create something new and a bit different. It's um, very much mood music if uh, the mood turns to uh, yeah, a rather more sombre, candlelit affair, and um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's one for um, for wine and uh, for contemplation. Nice, nice. What was it like going back over your old material and uh, thinking about it afresh? Kind of thinking about what would work, and how did that actually happen? Did were there songs in mind already, or did you have to go through the back catalogue and, and think about it? Well, we. Would be very um, familiar with the the back catalogue anyway. Just uh, 
as, as we often are year upon year, even when we're doing an, an album year, recording an album, there's, there's still key shows throughout. And uh, we spend a lot of time um, agonizing over the set list because there's that many songs and we've got our own favorites. There's fans have got their own favorites, stuff that work great in a particular kind of setting off a particular kind of audience so we like to pay a lot of attention to that so um we're already really quite um you know in tune with with, with what we've done and um so uh, that's some things were more obvious than others tried to have um a bit of a, a chronological kind of theme that's not necessarily rigidly stuck to but um they, they, it makes sense in some ways. There, there were a few different things we tried, and there were a couple of delays. Purely not um, that things um, weren't working out the way we planned, but just it would spark off further inspiration to try something different, and it was a luxury of time that we were able to have. I know some fans were a bit disappointed with the delays that I've had from it, but because it's quite, you know, a, a, it's a very different kind of release from us, it was very important that we were wholly behind it. I don't really believe it. Yeah. Well, it's out at uh, the end of this month, 30th of May. How can people get hold of it? Have you got pre-orders and things like that now? Uh, I believe pre-orders, and uh, they're through peaceful.com. And uh, we've also got links through uh, our own website as well, mydownbride.org. And um, there's uh, the uh, first limit edition uh, version that's out, the, the three-disc version complete with big deluxe that cover book is a very lavish package and uh, will be quite uh, limited number. I believe there's only going to be 3,000 of those ones. And um, so, uh, that, yeah, that's the one to look out for before. Uh, I think uh, Andy was joking before that. So he, he was going to buy up a few to, uh, to sell them on eBay later because it's just too good a package. So, you know, <laughs> there's probably some truth to that. <laughs> And what was it like uh, working with, you had a lot of, of, of guests in this, obviously you had orchestras and things like that, but also uh, Johnny Maudling um, you, worked, you worked with, and even Lucy Roche, I think her name is, who, who was a singer. What was it like working with them and having that sort of external influence in? Uh, well, we'd known um, Johnny Maudling for a long time. He, uh, he played on a couple of our albums, even he was on The Dreadful Hours and, um, and also Light at the End of the World before that. So... Um, He's someone that uh, we know, you know, could, could really, uh, you know, deliver and turn on the sixpence because that's all we ever did with him with, with, with the albums before. Is he hadn't heard um, the new albums we'd, we'd written until he was in the studio, then putting pieces to them and you know, be giving them ideas and he'd em embellish them and just basically be the the you know, extra pair of hands that you know we're not quite dexterous on the the keys as he is. So he was perfect that way. So we knew he'd. Um, it worked great on, on that. Um, uh, the um, uh, soprano singer was more of an un unknown quantity uh, for me. I, 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 I haven't actually even met her, <laughs> so, I, I, so I, I can't quite comment on the, that one as much. Um, and uh, so... Uh, but she was, she was good. I mean, you, I haven't heard the results. She was, uh, you know, her voice really adds to it, does it? Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, the... Uh, but, but, Keen to kind of avoid the um, idea of the, the beauty and the beast kind of things, uh, which you know, is quite popular in some kinds of uh, you know gothic metal. And keen to kind of point out it's not quite that approach. This is um, there's no guitars on this album at all, so it's um, it's a very different approach. It, it's to be heard, to be to be understood, and. Uh, yeah. Right, well, we're literally just a couple of hours now away from uh, you guys hitting the stage. Well, three, so it's all right. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, well, I, I always open up the floor to my listeners to ask questions. And uh, Edward, Edward Walls wanted to know if you have any uh, warm-up sort of things that the bands do uh, or, or even any sort of rituals that have to be done before hitting the stage. Uh, we used to have uh, more than we do now. There was one thing that would, would be quite... Uh, odd to look at for someone walking into a dressing room one time we'd uh, basically stand um, facing a wall leaning uh, against the wall with uh, foreheads usually with a towel or a t-shirt or something in between the forehead and the wall and just kind of lean against uh, the wall this way as, a, as the idea of kind of strengthening our neck muscles before head banging and things but um, 
and uh, this is pre uh, Blair Witch Project, but it didn't look dissimilar to the end of of that really. So that was that was quite cool. But I think we kind of stopped that after a while. I, I, I think we noticed red marks on our forehead or something. But uh, that was that was quite different. That was uh, cool. These days, it's nothing more than just. Uh, rem- reminding whatever drummer we've got at this point in time how many clicks are into certain songs. <laughs> now, you've got uh, five gigs in the UK tour, um, which is, isn't a great deal. Uh, London, Manchester, Wolverhampton, Dublin and Belfast. Um, this is so. This is the first one. Is all the pressure on now to try and make sure that everything is right for this tour? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, with... Uh, there's um, a song in the set that's uh, not been played live for about 10 years or so, another one that's not been played for maybe 15, and one that's never been played live. So, um, so yeah, there, that, there's certainly a bit of an unknown quantity for that last one there. That's, a, that's really dredging something from the vaults there. So um, I'm looking forward to it, but I'd be, um, I'd be flippant to not... You know, be aware of the, the gravitas of, yeah. of uh, the situation. So, uh, but yeah, we well rehearsed and should uh, should know what we're up to by now. Now, you mentioned earlier about uh, a new album in the pipeline. Is there anything you can tell us about that? Uh, just at the moment, right now, um, myself and Andrew have been working uh, for a small number of number of months now, and. Um, been writing and recording at our own home studio setups and it's just been a very very uh, very inspired and very productive period of time we've worked more and more kind of um, well we're, we're very much on the same page at the moment with what we want to do next and um, and so yeah just looking forward to seeing how, how this develops. There's, there's a few uh, interesting ideas in there, which I say some stuff is harking back to a, a, a you know, very old kind of uh, style, but with the you know, added experience and gray hairs that we've got now, so, uh, so we'll see. Right, well, I shall leave you to uh, get ready for the show, and thank you very much for chatting to me. Do you have any final words for my listeners? Uh, thank you very much uh, to Jordan and thank you for all the listeners out there and um, hopefully some of you might have been at the show tonight or any of these shows on the Albion in Ruin tour and um, well, nothing but all the best and uh, it's grim times we live in so hey, let's enjoy some grim music whilst we're at it (laughs) Thank you very much